Well, hello fellow Rainmakers and welcome to this edition of the Rainmaker Briefing with me, Mark Stonham. And the topic for this session is learning by doing. Um, the thoughts there around it's all very well doing theoretical learning. We can learn by reading, we can learn by thinking, by analysis, by research. And in a way that's, that's academic learning. But the learning that we learn for uh, a business, uh, business development, practice development, and so on, and particularly learning about our customers, is done through contact with them, by making contact, by doing things with them, having those conversations. There's a lesson there I'd like to sort of highlight through the, this uh, briefing around what conversations do we have and what do we learn? So do we set out with the intention of seeing what can we learn through a conversation? What can we learn by talking to people? What are we trying to learn? Can we, uh, are we opening up very large areas in which case it, the learning can be somewhat random or are we going into a more specific focus and by asking good quality questions we're directing the response areas that we're going to get back uh, in their answers? and uh, explore from there so it may be particularly that by asking several people similar questions we can start to get an average response from them so over my uh, business development career i've gone into various new clusters i call them sort of a, do a dozen companies in a particular ser area subsector or whatever and got a feel for what's happening within that cluster by asking similar sort of uh, questions once rapport has been established. So uh, particularly if we then look into new projects, maybe we're trying to take on a new project, get into a new area, and useful then to be working with and getting guidance from a, call it an inner circle. And I've been fortunate to be working with some fantastic people as this uh, Rainmaker series has, has gathered momentum. Um, uh, particularly around that, the, the amount of change that comes through Currently, we're getting a huge amount of change from the impact of um, COVID, the pandemic change, such as the focus on cash is king and people uh, really focusing on where, where's the cash coming from and how can they preserve that. The working from home environment, the, the furlough period, a lot of those sort of areas where there was no real alternative but to learn by doing. There wasn't the opportunity to... Uh, overanalyze this it was a very uh, immediate response in a lot of cases um, but part of that is is learning to double down on existing customers so focus on the 20% of close customers who produce 80% of the revenue and a, and a learning point that's been shared by many people across the internet in that area but as we now start to to come out of this looking at well what can we learn and prepare as we come through? So I'm anticipating that there will be, you know, like the, the uh, triplets as it were, so the three areas. So some companies, unfortunately, are likely to dive. Some may not recover. Some companies may uh, survive and struggle on, uh, and others may thrive. They pick up on something, they apply it, and it works, and they, uh, they move forward from there. Similarly with people, some may be badly hit by this and effectively dive and then have to do a really a real recovery job with help from others around them, no doubt. Uh, some will survive and, and, and struggle on, but also others will thrive. And hopefully people in this group, if you're watching this, you're one of those who wants to thrive and move forward positively. And you're taking some proactive steps to do that. So looking at well, what would it take to thrive? And uh, I come back to the sort of learning by doing, what can we do that helps us to, to thrive? And I'd suggest that that is, there's a danger of experimenting and casting a net wide in that area. But I'd encourage people to look at uh, how can we focus in on some things that are quite core to us? So how can we become even better at the things we're good at rather than becoming average at the things that we're weak at if we're weak at something then let's think about do we actually need to do that or can we um 
eliminate it in some way? Can we hand it off to somebody else? Can we outsource it? But for our real uh, core areas, how can we get better? And I'd offer three areas to think on. The first of which is, how can we understand and get better in our, in our own strengths? What are we really good at? Um, what are our, uh, what's in our DNA, as it were, in terms of what we are easy, what we find easy to do that others may struggle to do? And how can we pull that through and do more of that? And how can we learn by doing more of what we're really good at and doing less of what we're not so good at? And that for some comes through as sort of a uh, identifying our identity. What is it that we are really good at and putting that out into the market? The second area is learning by doing on our uh, target audience. Are we casting a net into many different sectors and geographies and industries and roles and job titles and so on? Or have we narrowed in onto a particular group of people uh, as our client set? Um, the internet allows us to break out of the constraints of a local geography uh, so we can now move to a a more specific niche by taking on a larger ge geographic area through the power of the internet. So really learning more about that marketplace and in this time of change, what does that market want coming out of this pandemic as opposed to going back to what it wanted going into uh, this, this uh, 2020. And, and the third area I'd offer is the, uh, how do we monetize that? Uh, how do we translate our knowledge and our knowledge of the marketplace into something that the market values? And looking here at what can we do to extend our product range, uh, moving into, I use product quite specifically, products and services, moving from trading time for money into an area where we've managed to productize in some way uh, some of our knowledge for some circumstances. So how can we... Um, align that with that client set what they're looking to do and have a broader span of sort of some entry level offers through to some really high value offers um, and, and a useful approach there is to look at well, what is the highest value offer that we could make there and stretch that and really stretch it there what's five times the current price maybe ten times the current price and who would be the people who would buy that and what would need to be contained within that and that exercise can then lead to some conversations with people around uh, what could we do, what could I do that would be of really high value to you. And then use that learning process by doing, by having those conversations, by testing the market, by putting something together um, quickly and then getting it out into the marketplace and doing that by communicating better. So there's a cha challenge there of, there are so many different communications channels these days that try to identify maybe three, four, possibly five channels that are worth um, uh, focusing in on. So things like LinkedIn, uh, website, email, and maybe a couple of others if you have the bandwidth to do that. So I suggest there that uh, concentrating on what we can do that will help us to thrive in the new market and take some action there to learn about that and learn what's, uh, what the demand is by doing things in that area. And the doing things are around uh, focusing on our strengths and doing more of what we're really good at, um, focusing on a marketplace and talking to more of the people who will meet that, uh, that niche criteria, and looking at what can we do that is going to extend our value ladder so that we can uh, offer more to people and increase effectively our uh, daily or hourly rate by scaling up in terms of doing more of the same uh, through, through productization. And hopefully the combination of those actions, the things we can do over the next two or three, four months um, from this being recorded in uh, the first, on the 1st of June, 2020, uh, prepare ourselves for uh, the emergence of the marketplace at whatever pace it picks up. But if we are able to position ourselves for those who are the early emergers, then we'll be in a stronger position than those who come through in the mainstream and certainly ahead of those who are following along behind and uh, trying to play catch up. So I ask you to think about what, what could you test yourself on for this week? What is the hypothesis you could come up with to say, is there an opportunity here? Is there a market? 
what am I really good at and work on some way of testing that out uh, this week over maybe three or four hours an afternoon or something like that to say okay how can I double down on what I'm good at the market sector or some product area and uh, go forward with that and I wish you good luck with your uh, with your learning and your experimentation it's uh, Mark Stonham signing off thank you